Fearless Gamers, and welcome to another podcast here on Fearless Games. I'm Matt the Vet, and today I'm joined by... James Walker. How's it going? Not bad yourself? Not too bad. Surprising, surprising, last month's podcast actually was posted. Whoa. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm actually going to check really quick right now if anyone commented on our last podcast. And no, no one has. Though everyone still isn't happy with that one um, 3D Earth Metal video that I posted. I should probably probably address that someday. <laughs> 3D Earth Metal? Yes, um, I did a video on um, those 3D Earth Metal like statues that you like basically take sheet metal and you bend them into little picture into little shapes and such. Okay. Um, you got like tanks, planes, historical um, vehicles, and Star Wars stuff. Yeah. And it was bad. Um, my hands were every my 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 project was everywhere but on camera. So I started just giving out advice while the video was playing, and apparently that understandably was not good enough for most people so everyone every now and then keeps go um, goes to that video and tells us how terrible the video is oh well you know yep. thanks <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the feedback yeah so how are you doing oh i'm doing you know typical typical stuff had the, you uh, make any progress with your hobby resolution uh, I made decent progress with the one mini, but I've just been super busy with stuff, kind of just all happening at once. But mm. I, the progress I made on it is actually pretty decent. It's the Segment Terminator. And, nice, uh, nice. I might, I, I think all I gotta do with them is basically like the leather and the soft armor and the eye, and he's almost done except for the weapons. So, so the bad. arms. So he's he, like. It's doing that Tisca Ruby esque effect, you know, of doing to me a clear something over something in this case clear right over gold. Once you get the color to the point you want it, the touch and you, if you're neat enough, your touch up work goes quick and you're you. It's actually, I'm always surprised at how fast it comes along once you get past that step. So, I was actually um, because I experimented with um Tamiya colors for a bit. Yeah. I was impressed on how easy it is to paint over the clear colors. Oh, yeah. So, which makes me, because, like, when I contacted Tamiya, because I, I'm, like, the only person in the world who can't get Tamiya clear paint to work with a brush. (laughs) Um, It always, like, instantly jellifies and just becomes, like, like I'm painting with Vaseline. um, Yeah, that is weird. I I don't know why you have bad luck like that. (laughs) I've... I've mixed it with water. I've d- I've looked at everyone's videos and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna do this and bam, nothing. <laughs> but then, so I got fed up. I called Tamia directly. I went, yo, Tamia, how do? And Tamia went, you know, the clear paints are supposed to be airbrushed, right? And then they gave me a mixture of 70 to 30 percent um color to thinner. Yeah. And said, use that. And I was like. Ah, oh, crap. And because I was concerned that, you know, being a clear coat, it would be like one of those where good luck painting over it once you're done. So yeah. I was surprised to find out it actually doesn't care if you paint over it. No, it, it's and that's one of the things I like about it is that it's 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 a clear paint that's glossy, but it handles like a shade once it's dry. Like you yeah. can paint right over a wash. It's like it's a, it's like a very thick wash that's glossy. That's Basically. really all. And uh, but like it's not thick to the point where it gunks up detail. It's just compared to a wash, it's oh my god thick. But <laughs> what what isn't compared to a wash? Oh but, yeah, um, no. Like I always describe like it with Tamiya is. I always get the impression um impression of like soup. With, yeah. Um, with their paints, it's like like I'm using soup. That's um. That's a little cool to paint. That, that is one thing. See, Tamiya, firstly, you got to be careful uh, with Tamiya paints. If you're brand new to their range, you want to make sure you use, well, whatever you want to use. But for what I do and what this hobby is mostly about, you want to make sure you're getting their acrylic paints because they do have some enamels. Yep. So 
you want to make sure you get the acrylics, which are flammable for reasons. Uh, yes. but, uh, and but, because they're – aren't they alcohol-based? I don't know. It's very weird. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, yeah. Well, I know the um, acrylics are because, um, like, they reek of alcohol. <laughs> I know, it's just weird because they're the only acrylics on the market that are flammable. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yes. But, Conta- uh, yeah, it contains um, um, ethers. Um, ispo- I'm never going to pronounce these words. <laughs> yeah, it's got stuff that burns. But yeah. uh, <laughs> Do not use near heat, sparks, or open flames. <laughs> yes, yeah, so all those all those fireside paintings, sorry. But, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Paint by candlelight? Yeah. But, like, I've done it. It's 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 a thing, but uh, <laughs> like to me, it paints their acrylics in particular, because that's we're comparing to other acrylics here. Yeah, they handle very differently from any other acrylic for this hobby. Oh yeah. And once you get a feel for it, though, you they'll they'll begin to use them to get better effect, and not be so like wary of it. And one thing I can say with their with their range, whether it's Mia Clear or other stuff, you can paint over it where you might think, oh, how's this going to hold paint? Oh, you can paint right over it, no problem. Yeah, so, yeah, no, the paint doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really cool for that fact because you always worry, especially when it's a like glossy drying like that, where it's like yeah. a sheen of gloss. You're like, okay, what now? But yeah. It, 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 it's, it's great. And um, yeah. There's um, a couple of interesting things that happened since we were last talking. Um, going over my hobby resolution, I finished three models. Nice. <laughs> um, a Lynx with Sonic Lance and two Autox, which you can see on the um, Fearless Games website um, when I do a little talking about that. Um, if you guys feel just sh- um, shameless plug here, go over, read what, read it, and leave feedback. Like if you want like specific details that you want me to go over in later posts feel free to leave a comment there and let me know um but i got that all done i got my water transfers on which were great um the apparently there was um like i don't know what i'm going with (laughs) sorry um (laughs) but like i enjoyed the transfers that i got from that i got for them i am so happy that i finally got transfers because that was like something that was taking forever for me to actually go and do um, yeah it's, it's always nice when, like especially for a custom forest yeah to be able to be able to readily assuming there's a symbol involved not every custom force has a symbol involved yes. right but assuming there's a symbol involved it's always good to have it readily capable of being applied to your models and not have to worry about did I freehand it perfectly enough to be u- in uniform. And it's just nice to ba- yes. wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, here it is. Yes, no, it's always so nice. And yeah. um, like you, February is probably going to be a little bit more challenging because um, job interviews are starting to kick into high gear. So I'm like running around trying to get documents and such to get yeah. those ready. Um, and I've got a fairly ambitious project for February because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine character models that I want to paint. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all different slightly. They're all basically, it's pretty much one of almost, almost, I'll emphasis on almost every Far Sphere model that they ever made. <laughs> so it's a pretty ambitious project that I'm trying to get all of them done in a month when yeah. it takes me like two weeks to do a single character model half the time. Yeah, it's definitely ambitious, um, but, you know, especially in a shorter month. But it's. Uh, yeah. Yes. But, no. Curse you, February, in your 29 days. Well, or is it 28? It's, it's 28 in this year, but it oh. could be 29. Right? Yeah, right, because of leap years. Yeah, leap years, which I still, whatever. But uh, Apparently, if according to Neil deGrasse Tyson, a leap year is when Earth's orbit catches up with the calendar. I, it's just weird. It's, it's just it's, it's just, weird how it works, but it's like, wait, if how does the how does the calendar um not lose pace with the Earth? Then like it's weird. It's weird how that works. Yeah, it's just it, it's just weird. Our our our, our weird traditions of timekeeping. This, but the uh, Gregorian calendar is weird, and it needs to get back into shape. <laughs> but uh yeah that's good i mean i i want to get painting some custodes once you know one, uh, alongside segment so it's like painting character models because of how detailed they are yeah. but but um uh, uh, uh a real quick thing the gigantic uh the the mega dish 
event just happened because we can't say the actual name, but um, oh uh, oh of, of the foosball. Oh right of 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 the handball. Of the hand of the handball that you you know the, we're the, not allowed to say it. The actual term technically for things like that's why I, I know a, a last year and a year before that at the very least. When people will talk about it, they had to beat around the bush because technically you can't. You have to get like the the okay from That's them to That's what say that it. Family Guy joke is about. Yeah, where exactly. he's trying to put put recording and the cops burst and go, "Do you have permission from?" Just NBC and they shoot up his TV. Yeah, that's like, what that joke is about. Yeah, it's weird. Like that's why, like when I was listening to the radio, I know last year I wasn't, I didn't pay attention, but this year, uh, you know, driving back from work and they'll be like. You know, uh, uh, the station is talking about it. They always be like, you know, on the gigantic soup bowl, <laughs> and it's like, and the, oh, so that's why everyone calls it just the big game. Exactly, because they can't call it the actual that name. That is weird. <laughs> yes, it was weird. Um, wow, I feel <laughs> a little. S- that makes me just as almost, almost as sad as when I discovered people are eating Tide Pods. Yeah, which, oh, oh, come on, people. You made them lock them up. They locked them up. They never had to lock them up before. You also, Tide, they pods also made the, the, Tide pods are now changing their warning. Warning, keep out of reach of teenagers. Yes, but, like, it's... Not only did they have to lock it up, the National Center for Poison Control had to issue a an epidemic warning to yep. stop people. It's like... And, I, they, and I, the, you, the like, government has stepped in and are legally forcing Ty to change the label. And I think they have to change the look of them now. Why? The, I mean, not the, I, I know why, because people are really stupid. But how, I, what I want to know is how did that become a thing? How is like, oh, look, poison. Let me eat it. <laughs> from, it's like, from as far as I'm aware. There are two things that I – there are two ways that I've understood or interpreted what this whole thing is. The first thing is just put a Tide Pod in your mouth and record you going, ugh, I just put a Tide Pod in my mouth. Lol, someone stupid. Let me go do it myself. Because um, half of them are like, oh, man, this guy is stupid. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I think in some ways there's how many you can eat and – how many times you can chew it before it breaks, I think, are, like, three of the challenges. Why? And, of course, <laughs> and of course you have to record this. You have to record this and post it on the webs. People have been getting chemical birds in their mouths from it's this. A, it's a chemical. All it is, it's, it's a poison to people. To, it's, it's on the bag is do not ingest poison. <laughs> it, I think you know what it is because it says keep out of reach of children so they're like oh it's only dangerous for children this is the failing of our educational system that we have people (laughs) doing this and these and 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 people and this is the generation going we're gonna fix all the world's problems and like you gotta fix the fact that you think tide pods are a snack food yeah it's like you can't fix the problems when you're nomming on tide i like when i first saw that i was like the very first one i saw like and not watched the actual video but just saw something pop up online about it I thought somebody made a food that looked just like a Tide Pod. You know what Apparently, I mean? Like you can... there is a food that's just like a Tide Pod. Like, I think it's it became that. Like, but, like, I thought, because, you know, because people will take stuff and, like, you know, like the cake bosses out there will yeah. be like, oh, it's a tire. No, it's, it's cake. It looks like a tire or whatever. But So I thought somebody was, like, pulling a prank, just like if you take Windex, but then you put, like, a water with drink. blue ford coloring in it yeah or, or like gatorade in there or whatever yeah and it's like and then you start spraying it in your mouth and people are going eh, but really it's just gatorade i thought it was yeah. something on that level then i realized it was an epidemic and people were actually putting tide pods in their mouth i have it's not a tide pod because tide pods are expensive but they i have are. a i have a dishwasher pod thing that looks almost identical i never once went mmm looks tasty it, 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 like i never <laughs> once debated what would i do if i put it in my mouth it's, no, <laughs> it's it, it's sad because now when I when when we turn fifty, and we go and see a medical professional, we have to sit there and go, how many Tide Pods did this guy eat? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you have a record because if not, I don't want to be. It's impatient. like, excuse me, before you examine me, I need to know how many Tide Pods did you eat when you were younger. 
And before the younger generation rebels back, not to us, but to the idea is like, well, you guys did stupid stuff when you were young. Not that, not <laughs> ingesting chemicals. Stupid stuff I did was like look into the sun and like roll around in the dirt. Like, <laughs> and like, uh, I like, think the dumbest thing I ever did, and I'll, I'll openly admit it, like, like I've done some stupid stuff. Like I've eaten pears as they were still growing on a pear tree. When they were at that age of you shouldn't eat that. Yeah, but it's <laughs> but not like it's, it's like a, it was a cleaning product. No, it's a, it was it's a, a plant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like... I I will say as a as a youngin, I did once look at a, a like a, a a fresh leaf off a tree, and I wanted to see what it would taste like. But it's a leaf off a tree, and it yeah. wasn't like it was, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't like poison ivy or poison oak. It was yeah. clearly a leaf. And I was like, well, Littlefoot's carrying this leaf around. I wonder what it tastes like. And it <laughs> did not taste good. <laughs> no, they do not. <laughs> at all. But that's the dumbest thing I've done. I never yeah. tried acorns because they'd always smelt bad. So I didn't yeah, no, want to try never, t- I've never bothered with an acorn because I always aff- aff- affiliated acorns with nuts, and I don't like nuts. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. But it's just like – but that that's why I did. And, bef- and yes, okay. You saw how you ate a leaf. That's stupid. It's an organic thing. <laughs> sometime way back when we most likely considered that breakfast right that and, and eating grass like yeah. i'm sure like i'm sure push comes to shove you got you know you do you, you you we you know an ancient uh cure for indigestion is to actually take the fire ash from last night's fire and ingesting it yep so eating leaves isn't that bad Okay, it's, and it it's yeah. wasn't like it was a dead leaf; it was a fresh leaf. I I, I have yeah. standards. Okay, I have standards. Yeah. But like we all have standards. We're from the good generation. Yeah, but it's just like, how do you go from playing outside, eating eating those things, or t- not even eating, going eyes to the gut and then stopping immediately, and then like you know, uh, to Tide Pods? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. And it's not even like they're four. And it's an and it's an epidemic of they're not childproof enough, or people are being are you know keeping kids out of it. It's like they're old enough to, to record video and post it on YouTube. Yes, no, these are these are full grown children who 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 are are should be wise enough to know that the thing used to clean your clothes is not a good thing to eat. Where's where's scruff for gruff when you need them? <laughs> But like it's just yeah, that flabbergasted me. Yes. And, yes. and it's now thanks to those children. If I want to get those pods, which I'm gonna have to at some point, restock, I have to get somebody to unlock it. Like I'm buying drugs. <laughs> it's like like they're yep. literally so locked behind things in most stores now. It's so now it's. So now the things that they lock up for safety reasons is spray paint and Tide pods. Yes. Now, if you go, it's pro- And if you're at like a store, like a like like a, uh, a like a Rite Aid or a Walgreens or like a supermarket, mm. depending upon how they do it, they can lock it up on the sh- there, or they'll put it behind the counter of the pharmacy. Yep. And now that means they're putting a cleaning agent you're not supposed to ingest behind the counter or lock the under lock and key, just like the really good sinus medication that you can make meth out of. It's yeah, not, and you can't even make meth out of Tide Pods. I'm assuming. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the recipe. I'm just saying. Like, uh, you, you, what's next? Shampoo's got to be locked up because you're gonna drink that. Is that gonna be the next thing? A shampoo milkshake? Like, I mean, oh, oh, don't say that. I'm gonna <laughs> if if that shows up on my newsfeed, I'm calling you and saying it's your fault. <laughs> but it's just like, honestly. This like Darwinism is staring this that generation in the face, going, "You just gotta step it up one more notch, and you're out of here." It's like, like it's it's bad, but um, he's just sitting up in heaven, going, "What I tell you guys?" Yeah, but like outside of social Darwinism aside, um, the big game was. I don't even ever usually watch it, but I I did, and it was okay. But mm-hmm. uh, it was actually a, a decent game, for sure. I didn't watch it. I'm not a big fan. If uh, any, I, most, I, most sports-related things, when it comes to the big game, I usually um, had to stop myself there for a second. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I usually watch the Puppy Bowl. 
Oh, uh, Piper Bowl is fantastic. But like, I didn't see it this year. I was upset. I saw the. I actually watched the big game this year, and the last time I watched the big game is I don't know because I don't watch things. But, uh, <laughs> but like, it was whatever. But I have to say there were some pretty slick commercials. Okay. The Dundee one was genius. Yeah, that was good. That, that was for, really good. For anybody who does not know, they have been advertising for a while. Like, if you go on to IMDb, there was a the son of a legend, um, Dundee, the son of a legend, the crocodile hunter returns, starring some comedian and Paul Hogan and Chris Evans. That's yeah. who it is. Thor. Is Chris yeah. Evans? Yeah. Yeah. And they were building it all up. They had a plot. Dundee goes missing in Australia. So the American son they no one ever knew he had is comes down to Australia to try and find him. And they posed a teaser, a trailer at the Super Bowl. And they're going through the whole thing. And then at the end, he goes, wait a minute. This isn't a movie trailer. It's just a commercial for Australia. And Chris <laughs> Evans like, yeah, no, it is. <laughs> oh, you're great, Dundee. Great, Dundee. I mean, best since the original. And Paul Hogan's in the back are like, and I'm like, holy crap, that's Paul Hogan. And he got old, but like, <laughs> he did. <laughs> but like, you know, that was a genius commercial for Visit Australia. It was fantastic. <laughs> um, the I speaking of Tide Pods, the, the Tide commercials were fantastic. You're in a this is you're in a Tide head. You know, it's like it, it was like ad inception, like because it's, okay. it's the very first Tide ad was the fact that it's like it looks like all the tight ads look like some other ad okay but the very first one builds it up and it goes no you're not you know whatever this is a this is a, a an ad for uh you know keep me closely for a tight it's a tight ad you can tell because it's all the clothing is spotless there's not one stain anywhere all the shirts are <laughs> gleaming and then then they make a reference like so if you think about it all the ads have perfect, you know, perfect clothing. Is every ad a tight ad? <laughs> and, it is, and then it goes into it. One of them was the old Spice guy. You know, I'm on a horse guy. Oh, him? Yeah, he was back. And he's like, now look at the horse in back of me. And he holds his hand. And he's like, and then, you know, what's in my hand? And a whole bunch of pearls and everything. And he's like, I'm in a tight ad. And it's just, <laughs> It was fantastic. I need so, to see that. That is glorious. That one was great. Another one was a good that's been floating around for a while before the Super Bowl, or like a week or so before, or, or before the big game, before the big game <laughs> for a week. Um, it was a soup okay. bowl. It, it tastes good. It's chicken noodle soup bowl. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, is um, the Peter Dinklage and Morgan Freeman lip sync battle for Doritos that, on Mountain Dew? Yes, that's so good. <laughs> It's that was so a good. great one. That I, commercial must have cost so much money. I know because he got two like hip hop style, you know, people, and he got two celebrities from like movies and stuff and everything. Because he got Morgan Freeman. End of story, yes. right there. You got. I think the best ad just about the whole money ish thing was it was a two guys sitting in lawn chairs in front of a garage. And there's an orangutan with them, or a chimpanzee, or something like that. I think it was a chimpanzee. Yeah, it was a chimp. Um, and he stands on a stool, and he pushes play on a CD player. And the CD player starts playing some weird up-tempo music, and the monkey's just clapping in time to the music. And it goes on for about 10, 15 seconds when suddenly the guys in their lawn chairs start bobbing their heads. And then immediately cuts to black and goes, we just wasted $1.4 million. What are you doing with your money? <laughs> trade. <laughs> nice. That's good. Another, and another commercial I really liked was Alexa losing her voice. <coughs> Interesting. It was, you know, Alexa, do whatever. And so it's yeah. like, and Alexa's given the weather and all of a sudden Alexa coughs, coughs. and her voice goes away. Yes. And that, it was fantastic because you got a whole bunch of celebrities and it starts off the best is the guy's like, you know, Alexa, give me a recipe for a grilled cheese sandwich. And he's like, and, and it's what it's that chef guy, you know, like, um, um Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay. It's Gordon okay. Ramsay doing, the, you know, as the one for this one. And it's like, it's all one big commercial, but it starts off with Gordon yeah. Ramsay as the voice of Alexa. I just love it. It's like, what a shame. You're 30, you're 32 years old. And you're looking for a recipe for a grilled cheese sandwich. Its name is the recipe. You bleep. And it's just like, it's, it's great and um, <laughs> there's a lot of really good ones and they were just fantastic 
Uh, those are like the only reason to watch the game, really. In my oh, no, opinion, yeah, no, it commercials. is. I mean, I the don't Ford really... one is getting a lot of flack online. Which Ford one? The Ford <laughs> one where it has Martin Luther King's. Oh, that's Dodge Ram. It, oh, that that's, was Dodge that's, Ram. That's sorry. Ram. Yeah, Ram had that one. It's yeah. getting a lot of flack, but it's also like, really, uh, why? I mean, I understand that people are like, you, you're trivializing well, MLKs, whatever. I mean, like, well, there's also. Well, it's more that they're taking his sentence, his meaning out of context, and they're belittling what his message was, is apparently what people are complaining about. Yeah, but it's not... What his mess. I mean, clearly, what, what what they're taking from that message is that servitude is great and the, the, and the Ram truck serves. Yeah. That's all the, the advertising. And I don't even like Ram trucks, but, like, the, <laughs> like, the advertisement all is taken from his speech was that... Greatness is in servitude, which is a big theme, not just of his, but a lot of humanitarians and whatnot. Yep. And Ram is saying, yeah, greatness is in servitude, and this truck's going to serve you well. So we're great. And anybody who takes that and to say they're belittling Martin Luther King, firstly, you probably didn't even think about MLK until you heard his voice. So shame on you. You probably didn't even give him any thought whatsoever at all in your recent life until you heard that. I know I mm. didn't, not because I don't want to, because that is... You know, I learn about him. I know about him, but you know, I don't think of him. Yeah, I don't think like uh, as sounds. It's like I don't think about him. I don't sit there going, "What will Doctor King do?" Yeah, I know. I don't do that for a lot of things. So it's like most people probably for even not not forgot he existed, but like probably forgot even that he even said stuff like that until they heard it. Like, Most likely. So it's like really let's let's calm down here and let's let's take away the fact that they um at least we're going for depth in their commercials you know what i mean like but there was there was a lot of good ones. the bud night was probably was also really good i did see that one i saw the one where it's them in the um in the um them about the whole american worker with the oh it's like whatever yeah with the, with the big patriotic music and all that and it's the guy going out late because of bud water oh yeah that one which was based on a real thing yeah which was cool um because they actually for the hurricane victims and, and whatnot yep. they 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 stopped the plant making beer and actually just pumped filtered water into water. cans which yep. is really cool but uh, no, no bud knight was was fantastic because it's it's all like medieval combat like these uh, 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 a, a small force of like you know ragtag people fighting like a bit against a big thing uh, over bud light and <laughs> okay. it's like and was it is it's a multi part that apparently was set up like months in advance with, uh, with commercials throughout like standard football game stuff, mm. and then like it, it it kind of culminates with the Bud Knight showing up and everybody's like, look, it's the Bud Knight and all the fighting stops and it's like time to do what must be done and he just he, he's on his horse and he rides through the everybody's parts ways, and he rides all the way to like a ye old convenience store to get beer, <laughs> and he he goes in he buys it and he comes out and he goes I did it. And it was, it was just so dumb. It was just, it was just so dumb. Bud always makes the stupidest commercials that are probably the best. Right. Like, it's, like... Like, a good example is the What's Up one. It's not that good no, it's to not. begin with. But it's memorable. Yeah, and, and the, the the frogs. That oh. was, that, that was so good. I met Wise once. <laughs> um, no, it was Bud. Bud. I, bud. I met Bud once. Nice. Um, but speaking of, um, a couple of interesting things happened in the 40K community um, recently. Uh huh. Um, big thing is Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 was announced. Yep. Which I'm excited for. I should probably actually play the story and actually try and beat it this time. <laughs> <laughs> but the campaign for that is brutal. Like, you cannot lose. Ever. Because if the Chaos Counter gets the 12, you lose. I lost two turns into the game because I didn't kill enough stuff. And I'm like, I only have one turn. How much do you want from me? <laughs> um, but this game is going to be pretty interesting. It's going to have all the fleets from the original Battlefleet Gothic game. So we're going to have um, the Na um, Imperial Navy, the Space Marines, the Mechanicus, which I found was surprising, the Tau Trader Fleet and the Trow um, Protectorate Fleet, the Tyranids, the Necrons, the Dark Eldar, the Craftworld Eldar, the Corsair Eldar, the Orcs, and Chaos. The whole kit and caboodle. 
Yes, and I'm very surprised, because most of the time, these games don't just flood you with every army. Like, like usually it's like, you get four armies. In the next game, you get a fifth army. In the next game, you might get a sixth army. But this was like, no, screw it. All the armies! <laughs> and, yeah, which is cool. And it takes place... It seems like it's telling the story of – it takes place during the um, Indominus Crusade because you could apparently field Gilliman in this game, and you'll have Gilliman's flagship. Interesting. Yes, I found that was interesting too, and apparently – I never do this – apparently a Blackstone Fortress crashed into Cadia during the Gathering Storm. Sure. I mean, I why mean, not? Yeah. It's weird, like, they've, it's it's one of those things where you forget that they were around and that their fluff may not be the same anymore, <laughs> because they haven't talked about them in forever. Yeah. Like, a good example is, um, the Eye of Darkness and the Hand of Night. Um, they were used to control the Blackstone Fortresses, and then Abaddon's like, here, Mortarian, have one. I'm like, wait, well, I thought you needed one of those to do your super ultra mega kill gun thing. But <laughs> apparently he doesn't want it anymore. <laughs> no, the Hand of Darkness and the Eye of Night, sorry. Mm. And I was just like, what What happened to the fact that you need the two keys to make the Blackstone Fortresses work? Um, but I guess that's no longer a thing. Yeah, I don't know. And then Mortarian lost it. Doi. Yeah. The Eldar stole it back. <laughs> because Gilliman asked them to. Well, you know. That's nice, though. Yeah, well... So, I'm ex excited to see that. Things that I kind of hope that... um, I kind of hope that combat's a little bit easier. Because... And a little bit less one-sided. I think my biggest problem with the game was is... Like, for example, if you played against Orcs... Orcs were really hard to beat because they had very thick armor, so it took a lot of shots. But it always felt in the skirmish game where, now granted, um, disclaimer, you know, lol, it could be just because I'm terrible, which I am, I am terrible at these kinds of games. Um, but it felt like, I was like, okay, well, let me play Orcs, I'll be able to take a lot of hits, and, you know, I, you know, I'll be able to maybe wear them down with the fact that they have to work so hard to beat me. And it's like, no, two seconds, my ships are blowing up. I'm like, how? <laughs> and then I play, okay, let me play Eldar. Eldar seemed to crush through the orcs. That's no problem. And then the orcs are like, <laughs> over. It's like, what is this? <laughs> They're yeah. not, Eldar are so much easier to play in the tabletop than the computer game. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But so I hope that the combat's a little bit more forgiving, um, in the fact that you that when you're not when the AI is playing them, they don't get super impossible to beat. Right. Um, and when you play them, they become level stupid. <laughs> um, we also got um. Apparently, we can. Apparently, we can take out take down the clock and throw it out because a squat was introduced to Necromunda. Yeah, and I what I really what I take away from that and my hope for that is like okay, we can throw out the clock. Here's a squat model. You happy? Now be quiet. It's like, yeah, everyone's now starting to go confirm squats getting a codex. I'm like, how do you know that? Their fluff still says they're all dead. Yeah, their fluff still says there's like five dudes left. That's no, 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 no. See, that one dude is gonna reprocreate the race. Yeah, sure. Listen, it's you, like... nobody wants squats. People say they want squats because <laughs> they want that to just be a thing because they want what they, we don't have. Yes, but nobody it's a classic, really they wants They want to be able squats. to go online and say, I could buy that. <laughs> but Here's I'm not the going I... to. I'm just going to buy more Space Marines. Here's the reason I say this brazen statement that nobody wants squats. Their fluff was terrible. <laughs> Their fluff is terrible, and you can replace them with the guard. That like, and all like, what did the squats serve? Like, what did the squats have that you couldn't represent easily with guardsmen? Or space wolves. Like, I say that I say specifically space wolves for the facial hair. That's really all pe people like, want: the beard to cover the entire torso and be down to their feet. Like. <laughs> 
people already use dwarfs from fantasy to make guard armies and call them squat armies. That just proves to you they serve no real purpose in way of making them interesting or unique as an army. The problem with them was, and, and is still with them, is the very nature of how they came to be. Back when they were a thing-ish, what 40k was was literally for hammer fantasy but in space it, they were specifically told they need to make the game work with the fantasy model line like that's where the whole starcraft jokes come from this isn't warcraft in space it's much more sophisticated but like, i know it's not in 3d <laughs> so like and um also the whole joke about the slan being the great old ones that the eldar talk about <laughs> right literally they took dwarves and gave them bikes and made a biker gang out of them and gave them a land train and yes. gave them quasi power armor esque things. Uh, you know, basically being heavily armored like dwarves are in in fantasy. fantasy. And they renamed them to squats, so it wasn't quite as obvious as space orcs. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, like and that's why Eldar are called Eldar and not Space Elves. Because <laughs> Eldar is close enough and it works. And, well, Eldari now. <laughs> oh, indeed, Eldari. But, I mean, like, back, yeah. back well, when they became a well, thing. Speaking, that's a little annoying because, like, I was reading a no I was listening to a novel where they switch between the two words. Gilliman <laughs> refers to them as the Eldari, but the Eldari call themselves only Eldar. And I'm like, pick one. Yeah. Because it's still part of that whole Eldari was their name before the fall shtick. Yeah. So they can't decide if the Eldar call themselves Eldar or Craft Worlds or Eldari. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a weird bag, uh, bag of worms. But like with the squat model, I mean, it's, it's a cool model. It's fine. It's having a neat-looking model. Having one be a, a bounty hunter totally works. Having it be an, labeled as an ab-human totally works you put some right in there with ratlings and ogrins and what yep. have you but like they call him a squat so there you go yeah and it's just don't you know one model is not an army make yeah. and to be people honest, out there we're gonna hate, just wait we're gonna see a list someone goes you underestimate my power and he buys enough to make an army he's like there you go there you go <laughs> but uh but it's just like the, the problem with squats in 40k now as an army if we do them is how do you make them not feel like short guardsmen or yeah. short space marines or a short hybridization or a short yeah. less bionic -y mechanicum you well, can't well gw says challenge accepted since they made like how many space marine army books kind right of, but i mean of. like but yeah but they're all a star taste squats would yeah. be a star taste yeah, squats, no. squats and just be like so you what will happen is you if you got your space marine like because i've seen some people actually convert up like power armor bits to be squat and it looks really silly actually but uh because the legs are so tiny but um <laughs> tiny tiny feet but like exactly but uh if they made that into a thing people would immediately cry about how they just repurpose space marine model bits or they would go, great, another Imperium army. Right, exactly. So, I mean, aside from the fact that Imperium dominates the landscape army-wise, in terms of just sheer numbers of yeah. different armies, you can't really make the squads feel any different for anything. Oh, we can make them technologically advanced. Okay, so they're mechanical. Oh, we're going to make them be, you know, a, a hardy people of fighting, uh, you know, fighting together. So they're going to be some, like the Valhalla or the uh, insert regiment here. Yeah. Oh no, they're gonna be you know super elite warriors. You know they're hardy, they're tough, they're not fast, they're gonna be strong. So they're salamanders. Yep. It's like, and that's the problem is you can't that, that yeah. already exists. Plus they are ab humans. They are yeah. squats. The Imperium would walk. It did walk all over. I mean, like they would be treated like ogre and ratlings are treated, which is ab human subpar. Yeah. Nothing. I would be told, like, to a degree, like, the 
like for a while the ratlings were referred to as squats right i mean by as a derogatory term by non-squats <laughs> right so it's 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 just one of those things for the i like i it's cool i like that they ruffle some feathers i also like that the way i look at it is they go okay there's a squat model you happy <laughs> we're happy um now one question in that video Plastic Sisters of Battle, 10 minutes from midnight or 10 minutes from noon? Who knows? Is, or just 10 minutes <laughs> locked, locked at 10 minutes to 10 minutes. The, the clock's batteries died and they haven't changed them. Exactly. All I know is that they have been building that for a like riding that train a long time now in terms of uh, alluding to the potential of a plastic this is a battle force and plastic S- thunderhawk yeah but more importantly i feel is the plastic sisters of battle yeah. they've been riding that train for a while now and if they don't actually deliver if it becomes a just just a complete joke prank or if it's a fooled you plastic sisters of silence army full range uh, i'm gonna be mad for the sisters of battle players <laughs> <laughs> i mean like yeah. <laughs> if um, there's anything that we want, and by we I mean the community, it's Plastic Sisters Battle. <laughs> yes. Um, what was it? Um, though, I will say that video proves my theory. The fact that we keep asking for them is the reason they won't release them. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, weird, it's a weird concept that seems to be pulling true, but at the same time, they, they got to... They they started pre the ma- pre their Magnus model. They had stuff you know p- scattered here and there throughout. And then they yep. like then they hit the nail on the head with that Magnus little you know yeah thing. Oh, this thing. doesn't come out for months. Plastic sisters a bottle. Yeah, and then ever since then, uh, Peach. All oh, the video with Peachy and Duncan about that was kind of awkward. <laughs> <laughs> when they pull out the Celestine kid, they're like, "Oh, we got the triumph of the Pride March." Blah 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 blah. And he goes, "Oh, hey, Plastic Sisters, they're finally here." And Duncan's like, uh, "Let's move on. We're gonna get a lot of hate mail from that." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, but it's just like that's they've been doing that for a long time. As for, and it's, the reason I, I I harp on it is because it's not like the squat situation where it's like man people want an army that doesn't exist this army exists there are it's, people playing it. you yes you can still play them yes. like if you have the money you can play them they have rules they will eventually be getting a codex they, it's just hopefully yes, they get a they range did, with it <laughs> they did say that every army that ha- is going to get a codex and so we will and this is right now the deal like the deal with saint celestine that was like a 400 hundred dollar something yeah oh uh, i've got i've got to find this now it's like 400 dollars. the living you, saint it's the living saint crusade and it's 500 dollars. it's and you get like four squads <laughs> yeah you basically get like Let's see. You don't even get like you get enough that you could build an army out of it, but then you still don't. Ha- you only have one vehicle transport thing. You don't have. A, you need more. So yeah, I'm trying to find it now because it's like it's in their new release section. It's in the new release section. That's where it is. Okay. Yes, for five hundred dollars, you get the limited edition model. Yeah. Saint Celestine. A two a Gemini s- Superior. Yep. A single emulator yes a one two three four five six seven eight nine ten man squad of seraphin and then let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten you get two sisters of battle squads squads and then you and get then a dominion squad a dominion squad and a bunch of and a sor- characters a, a an command assortment squad. Of characters a command squad a cannon s yeah that's 500 bucks <laughs> because of how putrid it is <laughs> because there is three four four bottles that are plastic and one that is resin yeah <laughs> the rest are metal and the one of the plastic is a plastic pewter hybrid 
No, the emulator's all plastic. Is it now? Because I remember it had a it had a pewter bit. <laughs> the Exorcist was the pewter. Well, the, the Exorcist is, is half pewter, half broken. The, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but no, the emulator is pure plastic. Okay, good. So yeah, that the turret is plastic. The whole thing's plastic now. It's your one plastic sister. <laughs> is the <laughs> Aside from Gunner. Saint Celestine <laughs> and the two Seraphim or the two whatever they call those things. The Gemini. Seraphim Gemini. Gemini. And the Gemini Superior. But yeah, yep. it's just like that's that's the army that really needs to be given their their just due. And I don't yeah. play them. I don't want to play them. I have no interest in myself playing them when I have my space when I have Dark Angels and Custodes and Thousand Sons. But like yes. it's just the fact that they have a following. Yeah. I've met a good number of Sisters of Battle fans slash collectors. We actually have one here in the group. Yeah. And there's there's plenty more they come from, and I and I've seen to this day on the interwebs every so often cropping up somebody going through the task of collecting a Sisters of Battle army fresh, and every time that happens, you have a whole bunch of posts going Godspeed, sir. God, yes. And it's just like, it's so, like we salute you for the, those about to die. We salute. Uh, but uh, and it's like come come on, just just. just do it already. There's no reason to not do it. It's like and... it's like you do you not like money? Because it seems like you don't like money. It's what it's what it's what it's like. Um, and um, but definitely eighth edition would be a good time to introduce it because it'd be like introducing a fresh new army. This is the this is the most opportune time. If they don't do it now, there is no good time to do it. Yes. And speaking of good, fine. It's about damn time. Guess who's finally got a model? Rogaldor. And it is nice. I am. I love it. I have a bunch of people I know who are not fans of it, and for some reason, everyone expected him to have a mustache. He's never had a mustache. <laughs> I think it's because in the text-to-speech video, he's got this really ballin' mustache, and so everyone just wants him to have a mustache now. <laughs> Fair enough, but he's never had one. And no, no, that... he's never had one. None of the artwork shows him having a mustache. <laughs> but like, that is what Roald Dorn is supposed to look like. It looks really good. The most, the most complaint that I've seen, the biggest complaint I've seen, is is the chain sword looks too small and his bolt pistol looks too small. The bolt pistol, it's, 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 uh, you know, it's not. It's not like the Lantern of Mortarion or something. It's not like some ridiculous, yes. oh my god, look some at that thing. Some people feel like it should be more like the Lantern because it's Dorn, the Bolter guy, the squad, the army of Bolter dudes that should have a big-ass ornate-looking Bolter. And that Bolter is the size of a bolt gun. So I think they, <laughs> you know, that bolt pistol thing, the thing he's wielding yeah. like a pistol is basically a bolt gun. So it's fine. It's it's. I think it's probably a size. And you got to remember, that chainsword blade comes up to his waist. Yeah, that thing is the <laughs> is the size of a tack marine. Yeah, like that the blade itself up to the 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 mecha- where the where the, the, the engine is. Yeah, what the aquila guard is and the engine for the actual apparatus is at his waist and he's and he's standing pretty tall and he's holding yeah. it on the ground. That's a big chainsword. You have to remember, oh, yeah. he's a big dude. He's a primarch. If you give him a laughably sized chainsword, it would be silly. I think it's appropriately sized um and because he's not the berserker angron with crazy axes he's got and, and yep. that's a huge that's an eviscerator on crack i mean <laughs> i think he looks glorious he looks and fantastic. i like how he i like his posing like very statuesque yeah. like you like he's basically standing the way Sigismund stands guard. It's like you will not pass. He is the Sentinel of Terra, and he looks it. And I love that they kept with the art and the, the description of him of being golden armored. Yeah. Not every Primarch is golden armored. I mean, obviously Sanguinus is, um, yep. but a lot of Primarchs have their color on them. And the one thing that was always interesting with the Imperial Fists in 30k is that they were described as like a golden yellow. Like yeah. gold was in it to describe them, and some key points would have a golden esque feel to it. And the fact that Rogaldorn is completely golden is just like he's the epitome of the Sentinels of Terra. He, yeah, and uh, he just looks so good. He looks so good, and I would, I would, you know, 
I would keep harping on it if it wasn't for the fact that my man, Constantin Valador, looks amazing. <laughs> he looks phenomenal. I will say that I think this is a small minor critique, personally. I do agree with some people that his his armor is a little busy. Oh, yeah, um, but he's like the first for, custodian. <laughs> oh, no, no, like, I totally get it. Yeah. But, like, it's busy to a point, like, I didn't realize that wing on his shoulder was an actual bird <laughs> i had to read the description to find out that's an actual bird on his shoulder because it doesn't look it on the um on the model i love the guardian spear oh his his I spear just, looks amazing his spear i looks just so... love the whole thing and i love that he's standing on ruins of prospero yeah and he just looks so like like I need to buy this model. I need this mini in my life. And that his anybody who complains about his head, that is exactly from the art. He's got a little thing on his side. It's not a bionic thing. It's like a, yeah. I guess a, 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 you know, showing his age. And he's got a mohawk. He, but that's if yep. he rocks it. He's and he's got wires in, into his face to integrate him to his armor. Yeah, but he does not have bionics. Custodian, nope. the custodians don't do bionics. They don't need them. They're freaking custodians. Well, that bars. that and if if they need bionics, then they're not fit to serve in the front lines anymore because bionics only slow them down. Yep. That's in their lore. If you if you get bionics, you basically cease to actually be a, an active custodian and you turn in your armor. Um, yep. So if they get, but he look his guardian spear is so. I, 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 what I like about it is is that it stands out from the rest without being stupid gaudy. You know what I mean? Like, you can tell it's a guardian spear, but you can tell it's a guardian spear for someone who's important. Yes, you can tell he's very important. And that's what I really like about it. And it's Constantin Valdor, the first of the 10,000. The, the secret, secret Primarch. Primarch. <laughs> he's not, uh, disclaimer, he's not actually a Primarch. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Nobody knows because he's the first Custodes. It's basically a proto it's, to everything. It's, um... It's it's based off the fact that he's so good and he has once bested Horus when Horus was younger in a duel. Yeah, he is capable of. They they bring this up in a couple places, including the Codex for 40k, because Constance and Valdor is rumored, heavily implied, to still live, which he does. Yes, because uh, supposedly he ran off and disappeared. Well, what he did is after the heresy, he became one of the High Lords of Terra. He was yes. actually one of the High Lords for a long period of time and then he suddenly stepped down and went to the sanctum sanctorum basically and nobody's seen him since but um where he could better serve his lord the emperor uh yeah but he is uh, is capable of going toe to toe in duels with primarchs in, in matters of blade contests he is nearly yep. he can be considered to a point their equal in in combat and he, he is just he's constant to valdor you, he the way he, he he i know you know everybody's like oh custodians are the are the ultimate you know do good although they're really not do gooders at all they will no <laughs> have you ever if you if you read like master of mankind they are douches oh they come they only care about one thing defending the palace and terra and the emperor and if even the most loyal of loyalists, they keep at Spears' length because they don't trust you. What, what failed once can fail again is their viewpoint. And no, it didn't fail. We didn't fail. But you nope. all did. Yes, the Grey Knights are incorruptible, but Astartes have been corrupted, and they are Astartes, so we can't trust it. Yep. Well, as one Inquisitor said, um, that may be the case, but does it mean none ever will? And then that Inquisitor got his head chopped off. But <laughs> no, um, the the Inquisitor lived on. They were sitting on a um on a on a ship, and she implied maybe he fell to chaos. And he and the Grey Knight went, "No Grey Knight has ever failed, has never fallen to chaos." And she goes, "That may be true, but does that mean none ever will?" And he goes, "It does." And then he gets all hissy. Oh, well, because it's true. No Grey Knight will fall to chaos, but a Star Chase have, and no Custodes can. Yep. Like you can't even breathe on a Custodes with the insinuation that they might fall to chaos, because to do so you probably self-immolate. Like you can't, yeah. you can't say like you know maybe Custodes might you before you can even finish the thought you'd be killed by everybody. But like, like the Custodes and Constantine they were Valdor, the Emperor's personal guard. Yeah, they are still his personal guard. There's 300 of them arranged in his in his personal chambers of the Golden Throne at all times in a defensive circular formation around it. But uh, he, 
Constantine Valdor is the first of all this, and he epitomizes what it means to be a custodes. And outside of Primarchs, or even with Primarchs, he is considered to be one of single handedly the greatest warrior of the Imperium. Yes, he is <laughs> so, a baller in every sense of the word. And his model, it did him justice. I will, I, I, I do like his model a lot. Um, he's the only model I'm okay with being unhelmeted <laughs> outside of Primarchs because I get it, you know. Which. I am happy Alpharius has a helmet. Oh, yeah. And I get Out of why. all the Primarchs, he needs to have a helmet. Because is it Alpharius or is it Omega? Yeah, you gotta, or is it just an Alpha Legionary who is wearing his armor? Because he does that, too. He does that. He does that a lot. But, like, and you got to keep that joke going. And that tirelessly ever always funny joke. We, uh, yeah, totally. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, I the whole unhelmeted thing, I I understand why they do that. It's a whole heroic thing. They feel more heroic, more super duper, because they you can see their face and and people like me curse it because you can never paint it well enough. But uh, yeah, but um, I just you know I I I accept it for the Primarchs by and large. Although Alpharius better act, you know I better be awesome with it. I mean the helmet's there and it's awesome, but it better be awesome, awesome. Like yeah, what, oh it example, looks freaking awesome. Oh it does, but the example model be painted up better make me go. I can never achieve. But uh, <laughs> and then the the other Primark I would love to see in a helmet is the lion. Of course. I just want him to wear the lion's helmet. <laughs> that's all I want. Mm, that's that's a good one because the lion's helm he he's rumored to have worn it. It was rumored to have been crafted by one of his brother Primarchs. Yeah, it's just the fact that it's called the lion's helm, and even though like yes, it's Mark Seven looking and where where where. Yep. I just want. Although I think my favorite complaint is is everyone going, why is it painted green? It should be black. And I'm like, how do you know? The person who made it didn't go, oh, I'll make it green because green's significant to them because it was. That, and how do you know the Dark Angels didn't just repaint it? That way it didn't look weird sitting next to them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like they could have repainted it going, you know what? We're all green now. I like to go under the theory that when the Primarch who – going off the theory that an, another Primarch made it for him, noticed that – Johnson had all the um, Caliban-born Marines paint their shoulder pad green to remember where they came from, and went, oh, since green is a significant color about their home planet, I'm going to paint the helmet green for him, since it'll be a symbol of his home. Also, we don't have a definitive, perfect descriptor slash image of the lion in his armor, but yep. aside of it being said that it's got golden accenting to it. Yeah, like ruby gold and something like that. <laughs> it's... it's, it's a lot of interpretations that are that I that are tasteful and not the dumb one with spikes and like a chest being the lion's head. But uh Yeah, that's that's that that's I'm like, ugh. Well drawn, but just ugh. Um Yeah, it doesn't look Right. It just practical. looks it looks uh, it looks like we're we're not trying to be Voltron here. It's like but it kinda looks like what a third party company would do for a not the lion. Yeah, exactly. But um a lot of them that are tasteful have him gold with black and green accenting throughout his armor. So it's very real possibility that his brother Primark, that's remember made it, saw the lion's armor and just so and just made it green for the helmet because he's got green yeah. on his armor. And so it's it's there's that too. And it's Mark Seven because you know they can't they didn't think that far ahead when they made yeah. the actual model for the lion's helm. But it doesn't mean it has to be Mark Seven in on this model. It doesn't have to. Yeah, it just no. has to be. He just has Heck, to be. Heck, um, there's a lot helm. of drawings. There's actually a couple of drawings in um, Angels of Caliban where it's kind of looks more knightly. There's actually one Horus Heresy card game artwork where we can see the lion's helm and it's very knightly. Um, yeah, and. and uh, uh, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, and it, it looks very knightly and it's really cool. And um, back, back when the back in the day when only GW if, yeah. tried to make a card game. Well, that and that is back also when um, that was all we had for Horse Heresy um, characters and such, and like di direction of what things would look like outside of descriptors, <laughs> like yeah. Uh, and those really, really old drawings that you really can't see much, like those tapestry-looking drawings. Yeah, and... and like the one of Magnus the Red that was sp basically drawn up like as if it was depicting a tapestry of them. Yeah, and then you have just even older things where it's just like, we don't talk about those drawings. <laughs> They're not good. 
In com- I mean, that's not like they're terrible, but compared to what we how, how far Got now. how far we've come, <laughs> we just like yeah, we don't need to worry about those. That's that's okay because, yeesh, uh, <laughs> that that but, that's how that, that that's really the best word for it. Is just yeesh. <laughs> and and it looks like um that the Angelus book was broken up. And now we're going to get it in two parts. And the first part is going to be Space Wolves, Alpha Legion, Blood Angels, and White Scars. Which and I like. I don't know why we have to have the Alpha Legion and Space Wolves back in the book. I mean, I get it because technically the White Scars were, were being encumbered by the Alpha Legion. And the Space Wolves are supposed to go there and relieve them so they can get the Terra. Yeah. And then they fight the Alpha Legion. That's kind of like old stuff, fluff of it. But like my point is cool but let's not have them be half the book let's have it really focus on the white scars and the blood angels um what we do know is is that it will introduce new um units for the blood angels the white scars and give us rules for sanguinius and jarate khan which i just like saying his name yeah sanguinius better be so awesome (laughs) they say that he's going to be one of the best combat primarchs He's better be. He's literally the Emperor's Archangel. He has to. He, he has and to be. The Khan better have a rhino. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah. I want the Khan to have his own custom rhino, like they gave Perturabo his custom shadow sword. Yeah, and though it's got, if, when you think about if that. If they try to upgrade it, like, oh, now he's got his. No, no, give me a rhino. <laughs> I don't want a Mastodon or a Stormbirders. No, give me the freaking Rhino that I know he has. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Give me a Rhino that has super heavy stats. And make it as fast as like a land speeder on crack. <laughs> but uh, but it's just I mean, it has to go over two hundred miles an hour. It does. But uh, uh, but it's just, and I'm okay with them doing that in terms of um. In terms of making uh, the White Scars and the Blood Angels together, I, I would have liked to call oh look, Codex Angel of Death is being referenced again thing. But yeah, but it makes sense because those two legions are the legions on Terra, so putting them together makes a lot of sense. And yeah. um, and, oh excuse me, and then the next half would be Dark Angels and Night Lords. Right, so we we have, we make the Dark Angels the last Legion to be talked about, yep. even though they're the first Legion. Oh, I see what yep. they did there, but uh, 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 uh. and um, I think they're also going to have Dark Mechanicum in their book. Because why not? But uh, you got room for it. But yes, it's just it's. I'm happy for the White Scars mm. because I was really worried. <laughs> for them if they were to be the last just because of i have to, i i don't know this but i have to think of all the first founding space marine chapter forces that are collected the white scars are probably the least with probably the, imperial fists i would say in a close running except for how popular the imperial fists are yeah like a lot of people always go oh white scars do everything better i'm like yeah but then you have to paint white yeah and like imperial fist is yellow but they have such a fan base like yeah. they are, they are a good example of a fan base overcoming a problem color because yellow is, is a genuine problem color for a lot of people, myself included. Yeah. Because they're like Teutonic knights. I mean, like literally, they are like knights. The only ones more knightly than them are the Black Templar, which come from them. So it's like, yeah. So it's like because of Sigismund. Yes. That if I ever were to do Imperial Fist, it would have to be heresy era and it would have to be sigismund's force and it would, it would be heavily blackened as well to imply their black templar roots or like the black templar mm-hmm. what they would become because it'd be his force but um no yeah th- that's why like there i i i would say imperial fist probably have more collectors than one might think given their color and the lamenters yeah. are a real case of here's a color that's problematic and then here's a shoulder pen that nobody wants to freehand <laughs> Your move, fanatical fans. It's like, <laughs> but, uh, so there's that for them, which is problematic in and of its own right. But um, yeah, so I'm glad. I just I was always concerned with the white scars because j- the Khan, Jahangati Khan, running a rhino. I want it, yes. but I also <laughs> I want the white scars to to not be 
put it this way. Dark Angels being last, there's loads of Dark Angel players, both the misguided Fallen fans and Notch, who are going to eat that up. Yes. I can't say the same about Scar fans. There's, I'm not saying that it's like, they're not Sisters of Battle level. There's plenty more of them than are Sisters of Battle fans. I get that. Yeah. It's not like their numbers are, are scarce. There's plenty of White Scars fan. It's just in comparison. And yeah. I didn't want that to be the last book and then go, oh, well, it's just the White Scars, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad that they at least are paired with something that is a lot more popular than them, which would be the Blood Angels. Because I think the Blood yes. Angels are one of the more popular, uh, for sure. Blood Angels are super popular. I love Blood Angels. You know the whole reason why I never collected them, right? Start the helmet color difference. I hate. I love no, the blood you hate angels. that they have um yellow yellow. I hate yellow for the fast attack. I hate blue for heavy support. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. If they're all red helmeted, I mm. I would they would be a ser- much more of a serious contender. Um, but because they're they're who they're awesome. They're blood angels. I mean, you can't. The prime bark is literally an angel. You can't. Yeah. How do you beat that? I mean, he is the only the only sanctioned mutant. Basically, yeah, because he was crafted by the emperor's own hand. Um, yep. And but he's great. The, I uh, going off of that of uh, things make you go, huh? The wild card's an idiot. Um, one one of the things to put the nail in the coffin for the salamanders is I did not see their sh- their transfer on that sheet. I was convinced they didn't have a transfer. So I, I stopped looking at salamanders early on. I'm like, they don't have to transfer. So you didn't notice the giant salamander head. No, I didn't. For a long time. <laughs> like, I got like a squad and a half of painting of dark animals, and one day I'm like, oh, look at that. <laughs> they got a, salamanders do have a transfer. <laughs> and I love my dark animals. So I'm not complaining about it. It's just that like, things make yeah, you no. go, the wild card's an idiot. I'm like, they don't have transfers. This is stupid. Why don't they have transfers? <laughs> No one has transfers for the salamanders. Oh. Everybody's best friend. Right. But, yeah, you know, no, they do. They sure do. <laughs> but <laughs> so, I always, like, that's another thing. Like, I always picture the the salamanders always being these super friendly, like, want to hang out, like, buddy bro dudes just because of how they're described in the fluff and everything. Yeah, I mean, they are the nicest described space friends, but people have to remember this little star days. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, look at our brethren and civilian friends. Let us all go out and drink. Yeah, but it's just like... Yeah, and that's one thing. The Salamanders are the nicest of the Space Marines, but they're still Space Marines, and if you don't, and if you aren't deemed something to defend, then you're nothing to them. Yep. Um, as much as I love to poke fun at the Space Pups, they are still a star taste and superhuman, transhuman soldiers of impeccable intellect and capability yep and um insert that for any other forces that's really you know drawn away the other and that's how it all is and i will say this though if the dark angels are going to be the last legion in the book i i hope we don't get luther stats um, the reason I say that is he's not in a star taste, and I feel like whatever they do will either make him feel too strong or too weak because he's not in a star taste. He's he's just a genetically enhanced human because he was too old, and yes. it's it's uh, the one of the only ones that actually fell into that category and is in a star taste is Amon. Yeah, but Amon was too old to be in a star taste, and Magnus went challenge accepted well, yeah. and psychically made him survive the transformation process. Right, magic, cause magic. Yeah. But like, but like, uh, Luther didn't have that, so no. I just feel like if you um, make him a, a character with stats, I just think he's going to be in that weird zone of how strong can we make him without feeling a star taste territory, yeah. and without feeling completely worthless to take. Um, I think honestly. I don't think he's going to be in the book because I, because Luth, like you said, um, Luther's chilling on Caliban. He never led with the Dark Angels, so it would be basically a why and kind of wasted spot. I because it's obviously going to be Sigiz, Sigismund who's well, going to well, be the non Primark character. Not not course. I'm Wayne. sorry, Course Wayne. That's who I meant. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I'm staring at Rogaldord right yeah. now. Well, yeah, Course Wayne, um, the, the Paladin. The... Yes, the the paladin pure blade, um, the hound lord, um, all the other t- epitaphs and more um, that have been heaped upon him. He was 
he was the dude there, so he's going to be definitely oh, yeah. the the character that's the non-Space Marine, well, the yeah. non-Primark character commander. Well, they, they're um, going for the whole time when they're fight, battling the Night Lords, and at that time, yeah. Luther was gone. Luther was in the Great Crusade for a period of time, but not then. He was yeah, in- no, he never joined the Heresy. He found out about the Heresy after it started. Right. So, I mean, Corse Wayne will be there. There'll probably be another character or two in there. Yep. Um, there's um there's talk that after Terra they are going to do some of the big campaigns that happened after Terra that is when Luther will show up. Oh yeah, because that's the age of scouring and that's going to yep. be that's incredibly important that's when the the the, the Dark Angels Legion got to strut its stuff because it was them and the Ultramarines were able to really put their their metal down because they weren't decimated at the defense of terror yeah so it's like and they will be like that's when we'll see luthor that's when we will see zahariel and that's when we'll see astalin because i know those are what everybody wants oh everybody wants cypher it well cypher technically didn't exist in that it well he existed but not the way everyone wants him to exist no but he does have the dual pistols he does have the robes and the whole name but he's not the cypher that everybody has come yep. to some reason like in 40k yep no it's a totally different guy and or there, is it there's well we know that he like warning now i'm going to probably be doing some spoilers for some people we know that he was replaced when luthor came back to caliban we know that that guy got replaced by another guy, I won't say who, and that's so far as we know in the Trail of Ciphers. So there's been roughly three since Luthor went to, ca- since the whole Dark Angels met up with their Primarch. Yeah, but we should know what that means. That means really those three are the same guy somehow. They're going to do something <laughs> dumb, but it's because um, it's Cypher and they can't do anything not dumb with them. Yep, I'm, I'm calling yep. it now. Um... <laughs> So, and possibly, ooh, and possibly, um, oh, what was his name in Pandarax? Oh, I don't remember. Um, Alamanthi, no, not Alamanthius, um, some stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he may have been Cypher at one point. And, right. um, but... It's all speculation, but that's when we're going to see them. I don't think... I think in this book we're just mainly going to get um, Corswain Lion, and maybe and so- the Lion and maybe Zahariel's cousin. Well, I don't... I, the one reason I don't think we'll get Nemeal is because he, he gets his head punched off by the Lion. He does get killed, but we have had a couple of characters that died and are still in the book. Well, but but as what I mean by that is, is that he was killed by the Lion in a fit of of rare rage and he didn't do anything except i am zahariel's cousin <laughs> like, he didn't do yeah. anything well worth... he was in the first siege um he did play a part in the siege against horus that the lion ran so he did participate well he was there but it was more like and he's named and he's a chaplain you know what i mean like yeah. now it would be cool to see a chaplain character outside character. of the word bearers but that's those are the three that I can. Pre- there was one other dude that I forget his name that could, that was alongside there as well that I could do it, be do that or oh, Red Loss from the Dreadwing. Yeah, he could definitely do it. But um, who knows? Who knows? What, it's definitely the Lion, Course Wayne, maybe that dude. I would love a Dreadwing character because me and the Dreadwing go way back. Um, and then uh. And then maybe because so, and I say maybe something else because it could be something else or it could be Deathwing, Ravenwing, Firewing, you know, wings. Yeah. Oh, uh, like actual wing stuff in there. Wings. As opposed to characters. But that's why I'm also okay with the Dark Angels being last because on, on top of the whole White Scar thing I mentioned earlier. You got the con and then crickets. Like who character wise, who are we gonna put with the con? It's like Who was the leader of the first who was the first com who was the second company Legion Master for the White Scars? I don't know because the White Scars used to use the moniker Khan for everybody in power with the great con or you know yeah. and, and everything like that. So I'm just like I forget who it was. I'm gonna let me see notable White scars. 
But that's why I'm glad they're <laughs> also be a short list. Yeah, that's why I'm glad they're also going to be alongside the Blood Angels because you got. Con, and then you got... Ah, one lotion. second, one second, hold on. The unique formula with nourishing... Mm. Sorry, an ad um, is playing right now, and I'm trying to get it to stop. Stop, please, stop. Uh, is, even though I have an ad blocker, it doesn't work. Oh, yeah, no, why, why would it ever work? I mean, we... Heresy era purse. There's one of them that okay, looks, just, that looks just like... Uh, well, there's, Has yeah, there's um, Haski Norian Khan, who was the dude who fought who fought alongside Jurate Khan in his youth. Jubal Khan is the one I was thinking of. Jubal Khan could be a character. He was he was from the card game shore, but he's uh, he's a name that that White Scar. Jubal Khan. Jubal Khan was a notable Khan of an unnamed brotherhood of the White Scars Legion during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy era. Like the reason, and he doesn't have much to say, which is why I think they could build him up to do whatever they want. And Jamulian Nayan Khan, who was a Terran born, so he might be up there. Like, the only problem with Jubal Khan mm -hmm. is that there's also Jubal Khan, the current great Khan. So it's yeah. like. <laughs> well, everyone will just assume it's the same guy, like they thought that one random dude named Dante in Fear to Tread is Dante. And just as they thought that uh, Xavier was Xavier. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but it's just like that's the only problem with Jubal Khan, that's also a name of the, uh, the 40k. Oh, they could do um, Tar, um, Targutai Yazurgi, the um, chief of the chief Stormseers. They could. But I'm probably just so you know, I apologize to anyone who's like, you're butchering their names. Look, because uh, uh, they have weird names. I'm sorry. They're, they're, it's, they're basically Genghis Khan in space is what or, they are. Or um, Quinn Za. He was the personal commander of the Primarch's personal elite honor guard. I'm trying to remember the name of the dude who was in that novella of the, the, the of the um of the who's he wants it's of the white scars um i thought it was torgan khan but there is a torgan I, Khan. i don't I, but there's a dude basically in one of the white scars novella things they're attacking an orc and cami he's on a bike somebody's got to be on a bike or else people are going to cry havoc uh so somebody's got to be on a bike as a special character for the white scars they're floating in space i don't care he must be on a bike which the funniest thing about that is yes, yes. what on a bike but they are also plenty of them on foot. Like people forget that the white scars are not literally an entire bike chapter. They're not glued to their bikes. They're not the Ravenwing who are literally glued to their bikes. They're not. Yeah. <laughs> There's a difference. Um, they have plenty of tactical squads and the devastator support and all that. They have those things and, and, and the equivalents in the heresy time period, the Greek crusade time period. So, but yeah, it's just, I think we've made our point. Like, there's a lot of cons slash yes uh, uh, I, too many cons yeah. you can make a movie too many cons yeah, and and outside of jubal Khan, just because he's named his name is also the current 40k chapter master name um and torgan Khan, perhaps because i think he's the one uh from the novel novella i could be wrong and maybe the uh their storm seer leader Nobody knows the as you like, unlike uh, Raul Duran or whatever his name is, the Blood Angels, Cor Swain, the dude from the Night Lords that I forget his name, Savitar, Savitar, unlike uh, Sigismund. Sigismund, unlike uh, Garvel Loken, unlike Jubal, that was his name, huh? Jubal, there was a White Scars character that challenged, um. Um, Sigismund once, and his name was Jubal. Yeah. And the big shtick was is he cut Sigis Sigismund's chains because he thought that it was holding him back. <laughs> <laughs> so they could have Jubal, as we mentioned, be the character for them. But, like, it's just a lot of yeah. Legion forces, even if you're not a fan of those Legions and stuff at this time period, they are, have characters specifically of, of noteworthy mentioning 
Like even in certain yes. novels, you'll have like when they when they're describing Raoul Doran, for example, they describe him as being one of the greats alongside such things as Sigismund Cor Swain, stuff like you know stuff like that. Yeah. That's how they brought up. But you don't really hear stuff about the White Scars. So if they were a book by themselves, having a lower fan base just due to their nature, be and not that they're bad, just that the, everything's gonna have a power ranking and there's gonna be a top to a bottom and they're gonna be, they're on the bottom. They're kind, yeah. But um, sadly, that's just the way the rankings work when you have nine forces right there's got to be a ninth yeah. and there's got to be a first um so that plus the fact that character wise we don't really know too many of them would have been a really i think poor combination to be on its own as the only new legion in a book so yeah oh yeah no <laughs> so uh so i am looking forward to that um being a thing i just obviously as a dark angel fan i'm like oh, yeah, i have to wait even longer to be that much more conflicted about what to collect for dark angels now Com- supposedly their plan for 2019 far too long should have been yesterday yes but uh <laughs> but like, could have been today yeah it's just like i mean obviously i can't wait to be conflicted on what i gotta do dark angel wise when the book comes out not conflicted yes. loyalist or not because i'm a loyalist but N- because that's what the Dark Angels are. Yeah, they're loyal, but not that conflicting thing. But more so, like, oh man, do I collect Heresy era now <laughs> or not? It's like <laughs> that type of conflicting. Well, I'm, I'm gonna try really, really hard, because I'm going to anyway, to make them my ally army. Because I really want to try and make my Custodian Guard my 30k loyalist force. <laughs> Like, I really don't want to end up just being playing Black Dark Angels, but I'm probably going to end up collecting oh, Black Dark Angels. I know I'm getting... I haven't bought a Primark yet. Yeah, and bar- the Lion, obviously. Obviously. I mean, barring that third-party artwork we mentioned about, as long as they don't do that to them, and yeah. Board Rule knows how to do... Chances are it's probably going to be more like the cover art to Angels of Caliban, because that seems to be the art that they're sticking with so far with all the covers and pictures of them. Yeah, and if they give us the option to have him helmeted, then mm. it's not even... It, w- it was a non-issue before, but it's it's so a non-issue that I might personally... Like, I, 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 the only thing I could do would be personally fly over there, but like, <laughs> but like I know yeah. I'm getting the lion. The lion is yes. my, going to be my first Primark model. Nice. Because nice. it's the lion. But like... <laughs> Barring that, whatever cool character model they make, I'm probably gonna get two. It's just oh no, like if it's gonna be, I'm gonna buy them regardless because like I did with um the Emperor's Children, I bought um Idolin, and I bought Falgrim, I bought um um Amon and Magnus. I'm gonna buy the Lion, and I don't care who it is, whatever Dark Angel character comes out. <laughs> I'll even get it if it's a Stellan, just throwing it out there, because it'll look cool, and I can always just, it, you know. I'm still gonna get it. I'm not gonna be happy with him, because it's a Stellan. Right, but, but it doesn't have to I'll, be a I'll deal Stellan. with having Astellan. Yeah, but it doesn't have to actually be that guy that I, because I'll, I'll paint him up in green, and it yeah. won't be a Stellan, it'll be... Yeah. Oh no, I'll, I'm gonna keep, like, I'll keep him as is, because that's just my thing. But I will. It, it's going to be kind of like with Russ. Not happy that I bought Russ, but I bought him because I need him. <laughs> I just, I, I know, and I, we've talked about this back and forth off, off air. Um, how it's like, can't wait for the to see what they're going to do with the Dark Angels. But at the same time, I don't want to just have a different colored force. <laughs> you know, yeah. like it, yep. it, 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 it kills me and that they're green. I'm, and I'm, I might. I might pick up Rogaldorn because it is Rogaldorn and he's kind of cool. He looks really cool. My big reason why I'm not looking to pick him up yet, at least until post Lion, mm. is I'm sorry. I can't do that face justice. I can't do <laughs> skin justice. My, my ultimate goal is to, because one of my friends has this goal, and so far he has kept up with it. He owns every Primark. Oh, I would love um, to, but... That's my goal, is to eventually own every Primark. Right now, I own Horus, Russ, Magnus, and Fulgrim. Am I missing someone? No, no. That's all I have right now. Um, But, like, there's a couple, like, I try to purchase... Primarchs for the armies I play, 
with the exception of Horus, because I was like, I have to have the War Master, because it's Horus, you know. That's like, say, that's like with the Star Wars um, 40k game coming out, whether or not you play them, you have to buy Darth Vader, because it's Darth frickin' Vader. Yeah. Um, I do have a small Imperial arm, Imperial Fists army in the works, so I'm probably going to get Dorn just so I can be like, I got a real old Dorn. Um, but... Like, eventually I'd like to own all of them, but I definitely, definitely need to be buying Constantine, because it's, like you said, it's Constantine. How can you not want him? Yeah, he's fantastic. But it's just, like, that's going to be when I start questioning what I'm going to do during Angel Wise is when the leaves and stuff fully comes out. But I'm mm-hmm. just, so having that be delayed, while I don't like it, I also like it, because I don't have to worry too much about that yet. <laughs> But, uh, you have another year before you need to make a problem. Ex- exactly, but I mean, it's good to see there. What it's good to see there is fuel in that fire again of of the Horus Heresy stuff moving forward. They had they, yeah. it was a period of lull, and it tends to be. But with Eighth Edition, it, it felt extra because you know it was more. Of a, they lost. They had a big impact last year, so it really hurt them. That it did for sure, which is which is never a good thing. And um, couple the fact that even on top of that, eighth edition came about, and it was more of a okay, what we we're gonna have thirty k v thirty k and forty k v forty k, which is fine. But now we also got to update things that are supposed to be forty k to actually be forty k. So it's like they had, and then they've got to deal with Necromunda. <laughs> Yeah, so... And The Hobbit. Yeah. Which, which who still plays that okay, game? Okay, okay. There's There were some cool terrain pieces for Lord of the Rings slash The Hobbit from Forge World. Their ring rate stuff is okay. They, you know, some of the models do look good that, from that range, GW-wise, and all that. Like, I love the ring rate models, but... um. They look pretty cool. I like the Nazgul. But, like, why hasn't this died yet? Of all the it's, games to die right now, I not just mean GW. Just in general. Just in general, I feel like it's time for the Hobbit slash Lord of the Rings miniature war game. I don't. I know that. I know there's a dedicated fan base. I know there is because I know how popular. There is. I know. I know there is. I've seen. I've seen some things on the interweb. I know there's a dedicated fan base for that, the likes of which there is for BattleSec. I get that. I completely do. But it's time for the Jedi to end. No, it's time. Uh, it's t- <laughs> it's time uh, for it to s- stop taking up stop. space. Because right now, I don't think anybody even sells that stuff anymore. There's no reason for any independent place to have it in stock. There really isn't. Because if you like it, you're getting it direct from the source. Um, yeah. So. It had the one cool thing from the entirety of that was was the cool little trays that could fit 32 millimeter, 40 millimeter bases in there, so you could do a, which would be helpful for doing like a display base and just having it sit mm-hmm. flush in there, whatever. But and it had smag. Yeah, smag. And it has the cool Balrog model, which is still a cool Balrog model. <laughs> those are those are probably the two only models I like from from the Hobbit. I like the Ring Race, but uh, but it's time for it to just stop producing there's no reason to support it and add on to it anymore i feel if anything is a hindrance to the rest of their their gaming lines it's just in the way whatever is extruding those plastic molds or, or running those resin or pewter molds is 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 really just in the way it, that could be better take better turned over to anything else um and i love middle earth don't get me wrong i love that as a fantasy setting but if, I was never a big fan of Lord of the Rings. Like, I thought it was cool, but I just could never get into it. I loved it because as much as I love the pomp and circumstance of lightning bolt, death, fireball, uh, <laughs> I really like the subtlety of what Middle-earth has in terms of arcane, magic-y, artifact stuff. I like the I like the subtle power of it all. Like, for example, Gandalf. Mm-hmm. Gandalf, to me, is going to be the all-time most powerful wizard thing ever. But you rarely see him do truly overt things. I just he very rarely does anything because he's kind of one of those dudes who says people should solve their own problems, right? Um, but you know, 
when he does do I'm not saying that's a bad yeah, yeah. thing. I'm like <laughs> And he but when he does do stuff is you're also usually pretty subtle. It's, yeah, know, with a few exceptions here and there. So I, I really like that about Middle Earth and so I really like the Middle Earth setting. I really do. But I, I feel like the Lord of the Rings movies happened. The Hobbit movies were happening and transitioned to being the Hobbit. The, I'm not saying Middle Earth is necessarily done movie wise. It could always something could happen, you know, somehow with the estate. They could do one of the non official books that added to the lore and everything. But there's always something they can do, but I feel like I feel like it's it, the 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 freshness of it is gone. It's got it's time for it to stop. Like this isn't Star Wars. And what I mean by that is Star Wars truly has achieved a timeless state. Yeah. Not that Lord of the Rings isn't timeless, but it was a novel first and it's a movie second. And I'm not yes. and and all that and then a game like fifth. Like you know what I mean? Like it's not like even in the realm. Where yeah. where like Star Wars it just plays hand in hand. So I I just think GW if they drop that and Forge will drop that, they would have more physical space to do things like um, model casting wise or whatever the case wise and just whatever two personnel are actually working on stuff there could be reappropriated somewhere else it just it, it just feels like it's taking up real estate and it doesn't need to be taken up yeah and I get it it's, but you know what else people still play BFG yep so good people still play. i can't wait for that to come back please bring it back right but i mean soon even with that you know it's people still play it without having any official support yeah because you have the models you have the rule book all the people do too same thing for you mm-hmm. for the hobbit fans out there the middle earth fans and everything you get you have your rule books you have your models the terrain you know it's Outside making thematic stuff like with the ISR on what you got it, you got it. It's fine. You don't need this. You don't need it to be up on GW's website to play it. You don't need it. So it should stop. <laughs> I don't know. I just it's every time I go to the website, I go like, oh cool, let's see what's new today. Why is the Hobbit even here? I haven't seen anything. It's like why is this here? But you know, it's the things that make you go, huh? Speaking of, yeah. real quick, uh, MechWarrior Online has put up the Blood Asp um, clan mech, which is, I believe, an assault, uh, yeah, assault mech um, in, the, in the timeline of Battletech. It's, it's a little bit later on than the clan wars and all that, but they're just kind of going full-blown everything. That's up for pre-order if people want to buy it. It's a cool-looking mech. It's pretty powerful, and it is, you get early adopter rewards if you do so. They call it adopter rewards, which I find hysterical. It's like, I, I just hear in the arms of the angels adopt his blood asp you know there are every day there are salt mechs that are going cold it's like, <laughs> they're getting tired and their engine oil needs replacing yeah. dearly for the low price you you can be the proud parent of the proud owner of a blood asp but uh so like it's so yeah but anyway that's out and, and, and mechware island i was looking at it uh, earlier today there is a lot of, I, I i didn't realize just the number of mechs out there for them if you weren't going mm. to buy it like this there's um just what they show you are some of them are singular mechs others are mm. a collection like one of them is labeled you know wave two and wave three that's not just one mech that's like four mechs in those waves each then you have clans, which is like four or six more mechs. Origins 2C is like four. So there's a lot. There's a lot of mechs in MechWarrior Online nowadays. So if 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 that was what was making people kind of go, eh, it seems kind of stagnant with the mech count because at the beginning it was really low. Uh, no, it's back, and they brought the Phoenix Hawk in. The Phoenix Hawk is one of those unseen mechs. They redesigned it to be in the game. Interesting. So like, as far as the unseen goes, you got Phoenix Hawk. You got the Marauder and the Marauder 2C that is based on are in there too. You have the Archer, which is another unseen mech. The Warhammer is here. The Rifleman is another. All the unseen mechs are basically in the game as a big ha <laughs> ha because, because they're redesigned them enough to be fine. And I have to say, they may have redesigned them, but the uh, the Archer looks 
it looks identical to how it used to, in my opinion. <laughs> like, if like they, I think the archer there went real ballsy and said, "You're a move," because because <laughs> it it doesn't look any different at all than how the archer used to look. <laughs> so, so I I don't know if that's a sign of anything or not for Beck Warrior BattleTech fans out there to come, but they're in the game. So awesome. There you go. And so with that, we are way out of time. Yes. So thank you all for listening. And until next time, Fearless Gamers, this is Matt the Vet. Thank you, Wildcard. Saying take care. Peace.